Hi, I'm Paul Steele from CodeShare.co.uk. Today, I just wanted to talk to you about Usync Complete. Um, I've been using it for a, a week or two now. Um, Kevin Jump was kind enough to let me use it, and I've been using it on CodeShare. And also, I don't know if you watched one of my Umbraco series where I did the eyelashing website. Well, I'm helping my friend out again. We're just um, changing it to a different template. So I've been using it on that. So it's going to be in V8, this new website, and I've been using it to test out um, using complete. So what I wanted to show you um, is how cool it is for things like deploying your site and how easy it can be. Um, and so I'm just going to show you the steps that I took to put this site onto the UAT. So uh, UAT is in the test site or staging environment. So let me show you it locally. So this is the site locally. And it's got doc type grid editor for things like um, the rows and what have you. So if I just go into the back office for this, if I go into the home page. Yeah, so I'm using doc type grid editor, nested content. Um, you'll see a preview pop up in a minute for these sorts of rows. So, yeah, I've got these um, rows that I'm creating in here. So in terms of document types, there's quite a bit going on. So there's not just um the normal document types for pages but you've got the elements as well for these sort of cards um uh, the rows that i'm using and cards and things so anyway um that is the sort of content then and it's inside a grid as well so it's quite complicated content getting send up so, uh, published so let me show you then so we've got using publisher uh, using complete installed and with that you get using publisher and i'm using using publisher to publish this so i've created a dev environment which is the one that i'm on here a uat environment which is uh, going to be at this address and i want to show it in the list for pushing and things like that and you can give it an icon and things and the way you create a server is like this so if i wanted to i could add another one called staging and I've been using the this option here and then updating that URL, ticking all of these boxes, giving it a name and an icon, etc. Anyway, so I'm going to abandon that. So I've got this UAT one and this UAT site, I've, I've published it to my virtual private server. So if we look in the folder here, it's in this um, Megan Thomas Lashes UAT demo folder. And I've pointed IIS to that site. And the way I did it was in Visual Studio. I've just gone to the solution, right click, publish. Um, where's well, published there. Then I've got a UAT folder set up. So basically it's a, a profile that I've created. I've clicked publish. And then the output of this goes to this folder here. And so I've zipped this up into a, a zip called UAT demo, and I've put this onto my server. So if we go back into here, that's where that zip file is. So that's the stage at, that I'm at. If And then I've pointed IIS to the site as well. So now if we try to visit this website address in the browser, we get the install on Braco. So let me just go to it like this, delete. So, yeah, it wants to install on Braco. And the reason being is because in the config file, I've got it so that it's got a configuration status. So in the actual build in Visual Studio, it's 8.4 on Braco version. So if I just show you it, it's 8.4 in Visual Studio, the configuration status. And it's got a connection string to work locally. So I've done a config transform, which when I'm deploying to release on here, that wipes out that configuration status and it wipes out the connection string. Anyway, so get, this is still not really anything to do with publisher yet, but I'm just showing you the stage I'm at for the deployment of this. So then if we go through to um, the website, so we're trying to install this so let's just do um paul i do admin at admin dot com one two three four five six seven eight nine zero 
and then we're going to customize this. So I could, because I've got SQL Server um, Express installed on the VPS, so I could have created a database, which is what I did for the real UAT site. But for this demo, I could even just use a SQL Server Compact Edition. So I'm going to do that. I don't want to install a starter website because I'm going to actually publish what I have locally up to this using using complete with mainly using publish uh, publisher part of using complete. So what you do to be able to use it, you need to buy a license for it. Now it's nine hundred pounds the license is, but you'll decide yourself whether you think that's worth it or not when you uh, when you try it. I think you can get like a fifty nine day trial or a sixty day trial. So um, you know, try it out. If you watch the video and you like and you like it, give it a try. This is just installing this. So what this is doing, it's got the the code for Umbraco has been deployed onto the VPS. It's installing a fresh version of the database in um, compact edition uh, database. So it's doing all this. So at the moment, the deployment's quite easy. I've not had to copy the database up or do anything like that. I've got the files, I've got the views and things like that deployed to here. So we have an empty website, and this is at UAT Megan Thomas Lashes, right? And then if I go into the local version of the site, uh, into the back office, which is here, remember I've got this set up. So now what I want to do is check that I've got access to this. So click tick that, and it says disabled. So for some reason, it doesn't like it. Okay, so we can uh, continue now. So I've got my license key set up and I should be able to contact this now. So I should be able to go onto UAT and click check access and it still says disabled. So this is going brilliant, great guns. Um, we need to find out what the other issue is. I'm loving this demo already. Incoming enabled. So at the moment I've got incoming enabled set to false. So I need to just tick that and then save. And then if we go back to here and then we just refresh on the local version on the UAT server and then choose check access, it says it's available. So that's good. So all I needed to do was in Usync Publisher on the UAT version, just have incoming enabled set to true and have the license um, details put in. So I've done that. So that was all I had to do to get ready for this next bit, which I think is so good. Um, so at the moment, I've got everything um, set up in terms of all of the things turned on. So show for push. So what, what it means by that is when you want to push some content or anything like that. So let's say if I want to pu publish to, it will show this in the in the list of available ones to do. And what else is a show for pull? So same sort of idea, but pulling from there. So I can pull the content back down. When you're doing this, when you're sending the content, it wants to know, do you want to include the children of it? So um, I, I do. I do want to do that. And but also I've got it set that the user at the time when you do the publish, you can choose all of these. So all of these have been set to that. And then so this is saying who can do this. So if we go back to um, using, if we go back to the content now, and so I'm in the local version and I just want to publish the whole thing up to UAT and I want to include everything. So I want to include all of its descendants, anything that's missing, all the media, link pages and everything, dependencies and files. And in order to publish this, it will create all the document types and everything. Because let's just go back to here. We've got no document types. We've got nothing. We've just got a brand new installer from Braco. So I've clicked on UAT. These are all ticked. And I'm just going to do send to server. And hopefully we'll get to see the um, animated lorry. But I, I think it goes that fast that you don't get to see it wobbling. No, it's, it didn't animate. <laughs> there was a big uh, a big load of excitement on Twitter when Kevin shared his animated gif of the lorry um, wobbling along so it's saying what it's going to do and it just gives you a report of all the things that it's got to do it's got to create templates, data types 
um, is got to create document types, media types, media. It's got to send all these media items up. So I'm going to click on publish. It's pushing all of that up to the um, the UAT site. And it will be done in a second. So this again, just to remind you, it was from my local version of the site. And all I've done is I've just published two and I've chosen where. And I did it from my root node. So I've just said which server I want to publish to. Now you could have this set up on Azure or anywhere really. You could have it set to, uh, it, and the good thing is, let's say if you've been working locally in a SQL CE database, but when you actually publish it to UAT or live, you want to use a full SQL. Well, with this, you set up the database when you do the install of Umbraco from the empty install. So you, and then when you do this publish, it doesn't care that this was SQL CE and the new one is, um, you know, full SQL or SQL Azure. It doesn't care about that. It will send it wherever you want it to send. So now we could just click on close. So that's deployed a whole site for us. So where we were before, we just had the empty site. In theory, if I refresh this, we should have a whole site working for us. So we've got the content in, so that's promising. So if we've got all these content items here, that means that it's also created all of the document types, which it has. And what about media? Let's have a look. So we've got all these media items in. So it's sent all the media up for us. It sent all the content up for us. And it was just literally published to make sure they're all ticked and click publish. So let's see if the site actually works. Now, one thing I might have to do is just go to culture and host name and just add the domain. So do uat.meganthomaslashes.co.uk and then save. So now if I just do that and visit it, it says page not found. That's a good start. <laughs> uh, do I need to, maybe I just need to um, rebuild my publish cache. So what I uh, usually tend to do with Umbraco V8 is go into this screen here and just build all of these and then refresh. We've still got it. <laughs> Have I um, put the right domain name in when I did that binding? So culture and host name. <laughs> Do you love it when things go wrong, especially for other people? Try again. All right, yeah, so I must have put the wrong domain name in. <laughs> Uh, it's loading now. There we go. So it's published the whole thing. So I've now got everything that I had locally has all got pushed up to this site. Um, and so you can look around it. It's not a finished site yet, but it, it's getting there. And it's good. I can just keep pushing these changes up. Every time, maybe if I make a content change on my local site, let's see, say if I go into one of the blog posts, if I edit the content, I can save and publish that. And then I can also uh, publish it too as well. So I can just publish this section. Publish to, I'll just do include descendants. I won't do include ancestors or anything like that, but basically I'm just saying include blog and all of its children sent to server. So that should be a lot quicker as well. So it'll just be the content has changed. So it's picked up the contents changed. So that'll publish that. And again, I've edited this on local. And then if we go up to here and then we go to blog. Uh, was it this one? I think it was. We should see that the content has picked up all this gibberish that I've added in. So that's good for content. But again, if I wanted to, I could be even editing a template 
so let's say I edited a template on here. And I'm only going to scratch the surface on this uh, demo. It's just to give you an idea. So I could do this. I could just do testing publish or template. Save that. So that's local, so it's changed. So do you think about what you normally have to do when you deploy things. This might not be best practice, but it allows you to be able to send templates and things like that. So if we go to here and actually we'll just. So I did it for an article, didn't I? So I can go into the article. I can do actions and publish to UAT. I don't need to include descendants. I'll include files though. I just sent a server. So this should pick up that there was a change to the file and there was. Click on publish. So what we'll see locally, let's just check what we're going to expect to see. So we should see a paragraph up here. So this is what we should see locally. And then if I go on to the UAT server, we should see it as well. Any minute now, yeah. Testing publish of template. So then, if we go onto the UAT site and we click on any one of these articles, we should see that same message, which is there. We should see that on the UAT site. Yeah. So it's even published the changes to the template if wanted to. So some sites, maybe you've got um, a UAT site. Uh, or a staging site or whatever, and you only ever do the editing on the staging site, well, you can do all your editing there and then publish it to live. Um, so no one really even has to be able to edit on live. You can just push it all up from the staging site. So, yeah, this is just a little introduction to my first impressions of and my first usage of using Complete and the publishing ability of it and how impressed I am with it. So I've been helping Kevin with, with get over some hurdles. There was, uh, because I'm using Doctype Grid Editor, there were some issues that he's ironed out and it's made it work with that. And also I said to him, with the publisher and how it you know publishes this up to a server, is it possible that you could publish it as static files? And uh, he said, yeah, he's, he's he's already thought about that before. And then he had a quick tinker over the weekend. And then the next thing, you know, on uh, Twitter, he's, uh, he's virtually nearly done it all. And he's got it publishing it out to a static site. So you can imagine you can edit all of your content locally. And then you all you're deploying is the HTML file. So it's a lot more uh, secure. And also it should be faster as well because it's just serving out HTML rather than server response time and things like that it's just html files anyway uh, i hope you liked the video if you did please click on like and subscribe and don't forget if you want to you can try out uh, usync complete if you go to um nuget you can install it and i'm not sure if that's the latest version but you can just have a look see what yeah it's 8.4.2 install package using complete and it's a, there is a free trial of it for a while, so you can uh, test it out with the free trial and then see if you want. Um, yeah, so do that, like and subscribe and everything. And yeah, I'll see you on my next video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and Kevin Jump's a legend. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.